Hey everyone, welcome back to Whimsy Journal. Today I'm doing something a little bit different in that I am reviewing a notebook that was sent to me by Suthi. So quickly, I just want to say thank you so much Suthi for reaching out, paying attention to my videos, and thinking my opinion was worthy. Um, they said I could choose any notebook in their store and um, they sent it to me for a review. So here is me paying it forward by giving you a 15% off code for your next order if you decide that you like these notebooks after this review and want to try one out. Um, I don't get any sort of commission at all from this. I'm just simply giving you the opportunity to save a little bit of money with the discount code that they gave me. So thank you again and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Unfortunately, I lost the footage before this, which was an unboxing of the video where you get to see the front cover and things like that. but. We'll catch up with it um, later as we move along. What I wanted to do for this video was to, I really like the pen by the way, what I wanted to do in this video is to test out the paper. So we'll go straight into a art process video here where I take some acrylic paint first and lay it down on the page. So I'm just spreading the color with a painter's knife in any old direction and wanting to test what the texture would look like if I um, scraped it this way and that way. So the paper on this notebook is um, really textured paper. It's very soft um, and it has those little like fibers and that you can see on the page. Um, so I really wasn't sure how m many of these art supplies would um, react with that kind of paper since it's very soft and kind of porous. I thought maybe things would absorb into it really quickly, but um, the acrylic paint did really well. There's actually hardly anything on the back of it. You can see a little bit of shadowing, I guess, but that doesn't bother me. So was really happy that acrylics work really well. Um, here and they don't really affect your other pages. Um, so something I wanted to add was a sticker. So I printed these um, out on sticker paper. This is from the Illustrated Faith Print and Pray shop. Um, and I liked this little phrase, it's okay to let go. So I'm just cutting that out there. I think black re would really stand out on the page that I'm about to set up, so mm, just fussy cutting it a little bit and then realizing that, hey, it's on clear sticker paper, I don't have to be too perfect with that. And I thought about cutting out some of the flowers, but decided to play around with some printed um, paper instead. So I have this printed paper from um, Lent 2019 from the Illustrated Faith Shop that I haven't played around with yet. But um, I have all these printables because they re the Illustrated Faith Shop really recently had um, some sales going on for their fifth birthday, so I stocked up while I could. So I picked this yellow, blue, and white um, kind of background page. This one really reminds me of my mom. She loves color blue and yellow together, and they're I mean, complementary colors, right? <laughs> so, this is the front of the notebook. So sorry that I lost the beginning footage, but it has a um, hot air balloon. I've been really into hot air balloons lately. I don't know why. I go through phases of things that I like. And so when I saw that on the website, that really stood out to me. And then the quote on it says, Not until we are lost do we find ourselves. I guess it's a Henry David Thoreau quote. I'm not really familiar with it, all of his work. I did read something about him in high school. What did we read? We read... I don't even remember the book. How sad. How sad is that? But um, the quote really resonated with me in the moment because um, it reminded me of how lost I used to be before I found uh, Jesus. And so... Um, decided that that was going to be the book I was going to choose mostly for the hot air balloon. Alright, so 
now that I've decided where I want that, I'm just going to glue it up very poorly, I might add. I don't know why, I guess it was extra sticky, so I crinkled the page as I put glue on it. And my desk is so messy, there is just stuff everywhere, it's kind of hard to work, but I somehow figured it out. And I'm just cutting the excess off. And I cut a little bit of the paper, but it's it's okay with me. I'm kind of going to use this as a junk journal of sorts. So um, not being too precise here. And I think this is going to be a good way to, you know, use up some of the extra crafting bits that you have laying around that you, um, you don't know what to do with after you've worked on a project. So, and this is also a great place to experiment in. If you're deciding um, on a page and you just want to see how things work together, um, you don't have to commit to a whole bibling page, but you can just kind of throw some things down here on a small, in a small area to see how they work out. So I've been really loving these uh, flower stamps lately. I got them a long time ago, but didn't really start using them until maybe this month. And um, I'm really liking the technique of what do they call it? First, second, and third generation <laughs> stamps. So that's when you um, load up the stamp with your first coat of ink, you lay it down, and then you just stamp again right after that without re-inking and you get um, some different, um, I don't know, intensities on your background. So I went ahead and <laughs> found my um, stamp block. I think it was in my backpack and not at my desk where it should have been. So I have some Versa Magic ink here. And um, the thing I don't like about Versa Magic ink is it doesn't dry right away. Stays on is my favorite, but my stays on ink I think is getting dried out or something. It just doesn't ink very well the first time. So that's a really nice image. It's the um, Versa Magic ink does give a really nice image on the first try. So here's my second generation stamp, and then up top is my third generation stamp where it gets more faded as um, it's, it, it's been used. And I'm just using my heat tool here to set that, make sure that I don't smudge it when I put the other elements on. Ah, yes. And I recently got this Maggie Holmes stencil and I really wanted to try it out. So what we'll be doing here is um, the molding paste method. So if you don't know what molding paste is, it's a acrylic medium that um, gives texture to your acrylic paints. So here I'm just deciding where on the page I want to put some of these images. And I'm going ahead and taking my molding paste um, and a little tray to put my um, mixture in. So I use the golden light molding paste and I'm just taking a slab of it, put it in my tray. And then I'm taking the, what is it, the coral color and I am adding that to the paste so that it becomes that color. So the cool thing about the molding paste is um, it's white but it doesn't um, mess with your paint. So like this usually, if I added white paint to this coral color, would become a light coral. Um, it actually just takes on the existing shade of the coral and um, um, that's really cool. So you don't have to add so much acrylic paint to the molding paste just to get it the color that you want. So using the knife to just scrape some of that onto random sections of my page here. So the thing about the molding paste is it does take a long time to dry. Um, and you'll have to be careful if you want to pick up your stencil and use it elsewhere that you don't smudge the existing um, places that you've laid it down. So if this dried away right away, I would have rearranged this differently um, to overlap some parts, but you just gotta work with what you got sometimes. And I just worked with the corners mainly. And I thought that looked cute. And just to test the border 
part of the stencil I decided to slap a little bit on the side there just because this whole thing was a test so why not and the dots turn right there and the line turned out really cute I think that's a texture that I will use in the future um, because I really like the, the subtleness of it so I don't know maybe I could find a gold oh I do have a gold paint that I could use and put molding paste on it and then use that as a gold accent on some other projects in the future I think that would be really cool so I just clean up the stencil here and realize that I have a lot of molding paste left over so what I like to do with extra supplies is I have this notebook um, that I just dump extra things in there and hope to make something out of it in the future and I am going ahead and I am drawing up the molding paste that's on my page so that I can continue with my project and now that the molding paste is dry, I'm able to put the sticker on the page without smudging everything everywhere. So there you have it. I was going to write on this page, but I didn't want to go overboard. And so sometimes less is more. And I just left it at that. At this point, I'm deciding what else I could do on these first two pages that I didn't work on yet. And... I'm just planning out the front cover. Um, the book came with this little inspirational quote on this cute little piece of paper, so I wanted to make it the first page, and it's a uh, quote something to the effect of, this isn't a notebook, this is an idea holder. So I really liked that sentiment, and I'm just planning how I'm going to cover up what I've written on the first page, and I go with something like this later on but before I get into that we do a little bit of watercoloring so I have a set of some really old Jane Davenport watercolors that I'll be using um, I wanted to try something low quality because I find that if the low quality stuff works really well then usually the higher end stuff works even better so taking my favorite pink color from the set and really wetting the page wanted to see how much water I could put down um, without ruining it and it did really well um, I thought maybe it would pick up so much water that the page would tear because of how porous the page seemed but um, it didn't and the other side actually didn't even feel wet at all after I put this down so I was really impressed with that this does really well with watercolor um, it's almost like a really soft malleable watercolor paper a lot of texture um if that helps describe it in any way and i will go ahead and pick up the pace here i go ahead and i dry the page so that i can lay down a quote from colossians that my church has been studying i finally got to use these um number stickers that I printed out um, from a printable from our journal girl. I was trying to pr um, stamp down some distressed ink on top of this sticker and it didn't work out so well. So I just decided to take my distressed ink stamp and um, stamp out September on the bottom. Um, it was September 15th, so I was trying to do the date there. And I take my Bible and I find the quote that I want to use. And this was the last entry I did in my illustrating Bible. So, or sorry, not my illustrating Bible, but my Bible journal. So, um, I am just writing it down for good measure. And this is another one of those examples where less is more. I didn't do too much on the background of this, but with the words um, and the hand lettering, it really comes together in my opinion so I really liked the phrase in here bearing fruit in every good work I think that's always a good reminder to always do your best and so that finished up that page and I'm doing a really simple first page background kind of feels like cheating because the artwork is pretty much already done for me in this printable and I slap on the quote and there's my first page and here you'll get a little bit more in-depth look at the book, but um, as you can see, those are this is how um, it's turning out already, and that's just one session sitting. So if you can imagine all these pages being filled out, 
after the course of a year or whatever um, it'd be really cool um, to see kind of all the different phases that you go through with your art um, this is the front of the book um, it wraps around with a string like this it's made out of leather um, and I think the back is really beautiful and there is that awesome hot air balloon in the front and I re just really love these two pages that I came up with I'm actually super excited to um, fill out this more with more quotes or um, testing pages for projects and things like that so thanks for watching bye